So um, I'm going to read a, a little Rilk. I'm not even sure if that's how you pronounce it. I've never read any before. Uh, but this poem is called uh, Duino Elegies. First part is the first elegy. Who, if I cried out, would hear me among the angelic orders? And even if one were to suddenly take me to its heart, I would vanish into its stronger existence. For beauty is nothing but the beginning of terror that we are still able to bear, and we revere it so, because it calmly disdains to destroy us. Every angel is a terror, and so I hold myself back and swallow the cry of a darkened sobbing. Ah, who then can we make use of? Not angels, not men, and the resourceful creatures see clearly that we are not really at home in the interpreted world. Perhaps there remains some tree on a slope that we can see again each day. There remains to us yesterday's street and the thinned out loyalty of a habit that liked us and so stayed and never departed. Oh, and the night, the night, when the wind full of space wears out our faces, whom would she not stay for, the long for, gentle, disappointing one whom the solitary heart with difficulty stands before? Is she less heavy for lovers? Ah, uh, they only hide their fate between themselves. Do you not know yet? Throw the emptiness out of your arms to add to the spaces we breathe. Maybe the birds will feel the expansion of air in more intimate flight. Yes, the spring times needed you deeply. Many a star must have been there for you so you might feel it. A wave lifted toward you, out of the past, or as you walked past an open window, a violin gave of itself. All this was their mission, but could you handle it? Were you not always, still, distracted by expectation as if all you experienced, like a beloved, came near to you? Where you could contain her, with all the vast, strange thoughts in you going in and out and often staying the night? But if you are yearning, then sing the lovers, for long their notions, their notorious feelings have not been immortal enough. Those you almost envied them, the forsaken, that you found as loving as those who were satisfied. Begin, always as new, the unattainable praising. Think, the hero prolongs himself. Even his failing was only a pretext for beginning his latest rebirth. But lovers are taken back by exhausted nature, into herself, as if there were not the power to make them again. Have you remembered Gastara Stampa sufficiently yet, that any girl whose lover has gone might feel from that intenser example of love? Could I only become like her? Should not these ancient sufferings be finally fruitful for us? Isn't it time that, loving, we freed ourselves from the beloved, and trembling, Endured as the arrow endures the bow, so as to be in its flight something more than itself? For staying is nowhere. Voices, voices, hear them, my heart, as only saints have heard, so that the mighty call raised them from the earth. They, though, knelt on impossibility and paid no attention. Such was their listening. Not that you could withstand God's voice, far from it, but listen to the breath the unbroken message that creates itself from the silence. It rushes toward you now, from those youthfully dead. Whenever you entered, didn't their fate speak to you, quietly in churches in Naples or Rome, or else an inscription exalted, an inscription exaltedly impressed itself on you, as lately the tablet in Santa Maria Formosa? What did they will of me, that I should gently remove the semblance of injustice? that slightly at times hinders their spirits from a pure moving on? It is truly strange to no longer inhabit the earth, to no, to no longer practice customs barely acquired, not to give a meaning of human futurity to roses and other f expressly promising things, no longer to be what one was in endlessly anxious hands, and to set aside even one's own proper name like a broken plaything, Strange not to go on wishing one's wishes. Strange to see all that was once in place floating so loosely in space. 
and it's hard being dead and full of retrieval before one gradually feels a little eternity. Though the living all make the error of drawing too sharp a distinction, angels, they say, would often not know whether they moved among living or dead. The eternal current sweeps all the ages within it, through both the spheres, forever, and resounds above them in both. Finally, they have no more need of us, the early departed. Wean gently from earthly things, as one outgrows the mother's mild breast. But we, needing such great secrets, for whom sadness is often the source of a blessed progress, could we exist without them? It is a meaningless story how once, in the grieving for Linos, first music ventured to penetrate arid rigidity, so that, in startled space, which an almost godlike youth suddenly left forever, the emptiness first felt the quivering that now enraptures us and comforts and helps. I'll read the second part in uh, part two.